We want to talk more about what happened this weekend downtown. Some activists, business owners, too, want last summer's citywide curfew for minors reinstated. Others have different ideas. And right now, as a city, we truly need to hear it all, hear everyone out. TikTok historian Sherman Dilla Thomas weighed in on Twitter, and many agreed, some disagreed as well. Here's his tweet, in part, says some of us can remember midnight basketball when that was around downtown. Never had these issues, and don't waste your time tweeting me problems. We all see them. Solutions. Tweet solutions. How about giving non-for-profits free access? to Park District Fieldhouses. Dilla joins me this morning to talk more uh, about his take on what's going on. Thanks for being with us. Oh, no, thank you for having me. I think you have a unique perspective on what's going on. They often say history teaches us how we got to this point. How do you think we got to this point? Well, that's an excellent question, and we got to this point by ignoring community members, uh, sociologists, teachers, not-for-profit leaders, when we were saying not to close schools, not to close mental health facilities, but also not to prepare for the coming summer, not to invest in our youth. And when you eliminate all those things from communities, what end up happening is what we saw this weekend. Absolutely. What made you decide to, to tweet out? Because we know how Twitter works. Yeah. Anything you say is going to be met with vitriol sometimes, even if what you say makes sense. Uh, why did you decide to, to take this step and voice your opinion? Well, one, because sometimes when you have a platform, you have to use it for positive things. But uh, on the other hand, I think a lot of Chicagoans start off with the fact that we don't agree with what happened, we don't condone what happened, we don't think that those kids should uh, go unpunished, we don't think that that type of action should be replicated. But with that said, no one talks about how we've gotten here. Uh, Ten years ago was a program called Cease Fire, and they had murders below 500. They had crime going the other way. And because some, something happened at the top, we pulled the funding. Well, there are automatic wards where the last five aldermen have gone to jail, and that's how we get the new aldermen, but we don't remove that ward from city council, right? And so we have to stay in for the long fight as it relates to investment. The thing I mentioned, midnight basketball, it kept people from going downtown. There's absolutely nothing to do in these communities uh, that doesn't cost money but to go downtown. And then this has happened now for three summers in a row, right? We, we all got the Weather Channel app. How come we're not watching that and saying, hey, it's going to be hot on these days. Let's get ahead of that. This has been happening for the past three summers, as you said, and a lot of psychologists uh, in our area are saying uh, this is a cry for help for a lot of these young people. You yourself are a dad. Um, you said you've got to have, you have to have hope, because if not, we have nothing else. Um, what do you say, what do you plan to say to your kids about, you know, coming up in the city and, and keeping their head level? and? and it's a little less about what I say to them and what they say to me. It, even if you have the best kids in Chicago, you are probably a mile out of touch from them because you don't live in their generation. You don't go to school. So I do a lot more listening to my kids than telling them uh, what I want them to do. And from what they tell me, that's how I try to dictate how I want them to move. Also, uh, I try to remain alert to where they are throughout the city. Um, I try to expose them to positive things, but I, I got an advantage, right? I do neighborhood tours, and so I'm aware of the things that are available. Uh, we don't have a Chicago history curriculum in our school to teach the kids what's available on different sides of the city. Uh, a lot of times when we have investments, it's a one-off, right? We're going to do this program one time, and then once the kids get used to it, uh, we remove the program. So it's very hard to trust the programs that we even have enacted. And then the other thing is the disinvestment that has happened to the neighborhoods. A lot of times you see on Twitter and in other spaces, well, how come the community doesn't provide something for them to do? Well, let's take a community like Inglewood. The homeowner rate there is 30 percent, and it's 30 percent because Inglewood was disproportionately attacked with redlining, with contract buying. And so how can a neighborhood with a 30% home ownership rate and it's under assessed with its tax rate provide services based off of that tax rate? It can't. And if you ignore that but want to do something about crime, you're, you're just sadly mistaken and you're not paying attention to history because it doesn't work. And I've gone into many of these communities um, for my segment, The Voice of Change, and they have fantastic nonprofit organizations providing activities for these young people uh, out here, giving them promise and giving them hope for the future. Um, you said it, it's taken us years to get to this point, 
but a lot of people want immediate solutions. If there is an immediate solution, what would you say that is? Uh, I think the immediate solution is free activations, and I think using those active, using the non for profits as a middle ground for the activations. We just had our Expo Chicago, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, if we can get the corporate community and the philanthropic community to buy a bunch of those tickets, give it to the non for profit in the neighborhoods, the kids in those neighborhoods can then go pick up those tickets, and now instead of being on Wabash Street, they're at our Expo Chicago, which is supervised, which has security, which had metal detectors, which had, uh, but also it's exposing them to the arts and it's exposing them to the creatives and will maybe one day inspire them to go on and do great things. And then the other thing to fixing it now, if you have a headache right now, take Tylenol. But if that's all you ever do, at some point you're going to go to the doctor and they're going to tell you that you had high blood pressure or diabetes. And so if you don't fix the root cause, if all you want is to take a Tylenol for your headache, you're probably not going to be around long and that's not a good plan for sustainability. If our new mayor, Mayor-elect uh, Brandon Johnson, reached out to you uh, for your input, w would you answer that call? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. All right, Dylan. Any mayor, I'm here for my city. Appreciate you joining us this morning. And as Thank I said, you, you have me. a unique perspective because history can teach us how not to go back and how to learn from past mistakes as well. Appreciate yeah, absolutely. you, man. Thank you.